Let's talk a little NBA here. Uh, I was texting with just a friend last night, right? And he was like, I can't wait for the playoffs. I said, you know, I don't know that I've had a playoff set up, you know, whatever that ends up being with the final yeah. seating here, where I, I, you know, maybe it just ends up being Denver, Boston, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel that way with how open the West is, or maybe there'll be just some reset of where the point of the question is this PJ. Like, do you have a sense of like who you really like in the West when it comes to playoff time, like the way they're built? Like, do you have any sense? Absolutely of it at all? not. Uh, the only sense, uh, the only sense is Denver. You, you're just tempted to say, look, these guys are the defending champs. Um, they've certainly won enough games. I don't know what the hell it changes every week. They're first, second or third right now by a game or two, but you can't feel really good. You, you can't like their depth. Um, they, they, they've been in and out. It's great to see what, uh, what, what Peyton Watson's doing right now, but they're not nearly as deep, um, as you would like a team to be. Their starting lineup is ridiculous. If Jamal's healthy, Jamal Murray's healthy. I still think they're the team to beat. I don't know what to, I don't know how to assess Minnesota recently because of the injury, but even before the injury, you know, until they do something in the playoffs, you always say like, let me see somebody win a series, win two series or something like that. They haven't done that. OKC's off the charts. They're so young. They're so ridiculous. I, 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 part of me thinks they don't know how good they are. Mark Daniels done such an unbelievable job. But they're, they're better in close games than most people. The way they defend, the way they execute down the – like they have a real sense of what they're going to do, who they're going to go to, and, and the ability to shut you down late in the game. Now, conventional wisdom says you can't win – with that many young guys, you can't win with that many guys that have never been in the playoffs, have never won a playoff series. Um, L.A. and Golden State, I don't know what the hell to make of them. I, I just think that trying to win seven, you can't do it. If it was a game, if it was the NCAA, those guys would be scary as hell because on a given night, you, you, have, you know, Lakers have done it more. They just like have the capacity. When we left Vegas in December, the in-season tournament, Ryan, I'm saying these guys at times look like the best team in the league. And yet you you watch them over the course of the year and say, I don't think they can do this in a seven game series. There, there's so many teams out there. But I, I do I do like Denver. I, I should have said, I know you realize um, Jokic is beyond belief. Uh, you know, I, I was saying about that. I, I think the average person does not know how good uh, a coach Danny Hurley is. I guarantee you the average NBA fan does not know how good a player this guy is. He's a joke. The players in the league talk about him like they cannot believe uh, how good Jokic is. I mean, it, it's it's incredible to hear the coaches or the players in the league talk about this guy. Uh, do you have do you have like an anecdote? Is there one that stands out when you're doing the prep for an NBA game? Because I know how you guys work. Like I saw yeah. it for years. The announcers hang out at the arena. They're there early to shoot around. They're talking to the assistants. And it's just like, hey, set me straight of what's going on. Is there one pre-Jokic moment that you'll remember from this year or uh, other years? No, it just, again, we were talking before about how you, like what you do and how you take something away. You can't. Michael Malone does such a good job involving him and everything. But the guy, like, he does, he does silly little things that you don't even think about. Like, is he a good defender? No. But at some point in the game, he makes a rotation or he makes a steal. He makes a pass. It's it's just absurd the way he can impact the game. And he reminds me, Stockton to me used to be, John Stockton never used to want to shoot the ball uh, that much. Like you, the game goes on and on. And all of a sudden it starts to slip away from them a little bit in the fourth quarter. They get down like five. And you go, oh, this is a really important possession. He comes dribbling down, stops, shoots a three and makes it or like runs a pick and roll with Carl instead of hitting a pick and roll guy, he makes the jump shot. You always felt like he was playing with the game. Like he was, he knew exactly what was going on, what he needed to do. And when he needed to do it, he would do it. That's the way Jokic is the entire game. He manipulates the game like nobody else in the league does. But I'll tell you, and I don't know how much you've had a chance to see him. Wemby has the ability to get there in, in, in the future. Because of his skill set, uh, he's going to do it more on the defensive end. But the, his passing and his shooting and the stuff he does offensively, he's going to control a game uh, like nobody other than Jokic that I've seen recently can do. Um, Embiid, when he's healthy, can do it. I'm, I'm not as big an Embiid guy because of all the games he misses. But Jokic, I'd, I'd pay money to see him play every single night. And I'm hoping 
they're, they're good in the playoffs. I'm glad you didn't ask me about the East. What's your take on the East? Um, is your former stomping ground going to get it done this year or no? I do think Boston comes out of the East, but I'm worried in a way that I, I downplayed it you know, in the beginning of the year because the beginning of the year, the same stuff was kind of coming up. And I feel like I have to almost give you my entire time, but I, the audience has heard it so many different times. When they were getting to the Eastern Conference Finals with Brad, that was all way ahead of schedule. So it's like, oh, well, this group keeps losing late. And you're like, are you kidding me? Like, they, they shouldn't have been in the finals in the 17. And then they lose to LeBron in game seven at home with Kyrie watching. Actually, wasn't even there. And so you get the point, like, that probably shouldn't have happened. And the fact they even got to LeBron, like, late possession game seven to get to the NBA finals where they probably were getting killed by Golden State anyway. Like, those are, those are like, just, like, back pocket thing. Like, it's almost like they don't really count. So when you pile it all up, to make the anti-Celtics argument of, well, they lost in the finals in 22. And last year's an embarrassment, like flat-out embarrassment. They were better than Miami. They got punked by him in the beginning. And then I think they showed their talent in coming back from it. They lose game seven. Tatum goes down. Who knows? But you start to wonder, like, okay, where's my trust factor with team? When every number tells you this is a historically dominant yeah. basketball team. And when you watch them clicking with their five guys, and I think they're one through seven, you're just like, this is this is ridiculous. But I can't get the games out of my head like the 30-point blown lead to Atlanta at their place and then losing the rematch where you think you'd be so pissed off about what you let happen that you, you would kick the hell out of them the next time around, and that doesn't happen. But the elbow, extended, catch, dance, jab step, fucking step back <laughs> shit where you're like, you guys are all awesome. The teen is, but if you're going to do this and be this predictable and stop doing the drive and kick stuff where you become unguardable, if you're going to make yourself easier to guard, I don't care about the efficiency stats and the historic numbers for the starting five here. I'm not going to care about that because that's going to that's going to give you like PTSD from the other times that you've seen it where I know that Jokic is going to get you a really good look. And that's what I think this game is. It's very simple. In those moments, do you trust your guys to get you the look you need? It doesn't have to go in, but does it have to be yeah. a good look? And if and if it's these habits with this Boston team where like I've argued PJ with my Boston friends being like, oh, this team's not that good. They're chokers and all this. I'm like, dude, they're not. They're not. Like we we crit they'll they'll win like 15 out of 16 and then everybody's pointing to the loss. But I thought the Denver games were very yeah. revealing that there's just not anyone at Jokic's level, which is fine because the other 29 teams are all in the same group because there's no one at that guy's level and finding you unlocking the tough possessions. He does it better than anybody in the league. That's what the game's about. And I don't think the Celtics unlock the really tough possessions as much as I need them to to win the whole thing. I do think they can win the East. I wouldn't pick them against Denver. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I give Brad credit, though. As, as great a coach he was, I wasn't sure about the Porzingis thing. I, I thought we – Well, especially on the extension, you know, because you're like, he gets hurt all the time. He's been awesome yeah. for him. I mean, he's a 20-point-a-game guy for his yeah, career, I, I mean, right? But he, he, does, he does multiple things, too, and the health is enormous. I thought giving up Marcus Smart, Marcus Smart was some people love him, some people hate him. I thought that was going to hurt. And then they don't luck onto, but they get Drew Holiday. Are you kidding me? I mean, that that's my. Well, they kind of, I think you're right. They kind of luck to do it. Where you're like, imagine, you pick right. him up. I'm saying, like, holy God, has this thing worked out for them? Um, but but you, every time you're ready to anoint them, you just you just hesitate a little bit. I don't know. I, I I'd love to see him step up. I would like to see, selfishly, I'd love to see Denver play, be healthy and play as good as Denver can play and win the West and Boston win the East and have this like epic uh, final. But I, I don't know that it's in the cards. All right. I have one other question before we finish with something else. Uh, I think it's worth bringing up Luca because I think we take Luca for granted. I know that yeah. I do because I'm, I'll turn it on and you'll have a quarter with him. And it's almost so easy, it it's it can be like less entertaining, <laughs> which which sounds yeah. stupid, but it's so easy to him, PJ. And you know, I'm debating where I'm going to put him in the MVP behind yeah. Jokic, but I don't know if it's two ahead of Giannis or if it's it's three behind yeah. Giannis because I you know I just appreciate 
who these three guys are right now at this level so much. But the Kyrie balance where there's been st- the stability that you want from the Kyrie element, the basketball part of this, and I think the non-basketball part of it, it's been really great. And it may be, I don't really care what their seed is. Like I'm just coming around to thinking that this version of Dallas and Luca knowing, hey, just pencil him in for his 38, 12, and 9. Like it's just going to – you can throw whatever defense. You can force the ball. out. He's getting his 30 in every one of these games. Are you open to him? Like I just like this team more than the team that made it to the Western Conference Finals where I was like, well, look, once they get to Golden State, I don't really think this is going to be much yeah. of a series. I'm feeling different about them now. Because it's been a really good stretch. I'll try and give a short, which you know I'm not capable of answer. Um, First of all, I was so sick of hearing about Luca before he came to the NBA. Everybody was saying, "Oh, this guy's transcendental." Where do you see him? Blah blah blah. It took like two minutes in Shanghai. They were, I think, they played uh, Golden State, uh, and I was over there with NBA Academy, and I watched like two minutes, and I was going, "Holy God, they're not exaggerating. This guy is that good." He, He, it is absolutely mind-boggling what he's capable of doing and it looks like he's playing with the game the last nba game i had was Sixers at dallas now joel didn't play but it was a game in dallas three sundays ago four sundays ago i don't know whenever the hell it was and uh it, it's it, it's mind-boggling they're out of the game there's no chance and then all of a sudden he scores like 20 out of 22 and he's laughing as he's doing it and he's yelling at the refs and it's like you know, when, when it passes the appropriate play, he makes it. Um, it, it it's, it's amazing. And then on top of that, Kesty and I have the series with Phoenix when Monty's coaching Aiden still in Phoenix two years ago after they get beat by like 180 the first two games in uh, Phoenix and go, well, we're never coming back here. They find a way to win games three and four. We go back. They get killed again in game five. And go, well, we're never coming back here. They win game six. And then they go back and win game seven, like in a walkover. Um, I, I, he's in that mix. We didn't, we didn't go deeper uh, in, in, in the Western Conference. Where the hell do you put him? You cannot want to be in a – if you're in a close game, you can lose the game because he's the difference in the game. Can, can he buckle up and, and, and do it? He and Kyrie are more on the same page than they've ever been. I give Jay Kidd credit for manipulating it, but they're – well, they don't. They don't stop you, Ryan. You know how hard it is to to win when they, when you don't do that. Um, I don't know what they go to uh, in the playoffs, but I guarantee you. And I haven't been as much west this year as, as I've been in past years. There's there's a couple of teams that I know are terrified. If they, I don't know who it is, but I know there's got to be a couple that that want no part of that matchup because this kid is so he's so good and he makes it look so effortless. But he. He plays with the game more than anybody that, that I've seen in a long – he literally plays with the game, and, that, and that's concerning, Real, most concerning if I'm Jay Kidd because Jay Kidd was a warrior in terms of trying to want to win. How the hell he, he coaches him and, and, and gets him from game to game, I, I, I don't know. It, it, some nights he just frustrates you with his ability, me personally. Yeah, I mean, he's 32, 10, and 10 this month. And they've won their last 11 games. They've had a couple of incredible streaks where they look unbeatable, unbeatable. Uh, and he, and, and he looks focused. I like, I'm giving him his due. Like he's not, he's not great. He's obviously great. He's one of the best players in the league in a long, long time, but he still, boy, if he could go, you know, one more notch, if there's such a thing of commit commitment and, and defense and, and, you know, show that you really, really want to win. And I, I know he wants to win. He prefers to win, but whether he wants to do this, the other stuff you need to do to win, I don't know. 